What's going on everybody? Welcome to the Ryan Pineda Show where we talk all things money, real estate, and entrepreneurship. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Airbnb and long-term rentals. Which one's better? Stay tuned to find out. So I actually wrote an article for Forbes.com about Airbnb and why I liked it so much. If you guys wanna read it, you can find it in the link below. If you've been subscribed to my channel, you've probably seen the Airbnb videos I've done on my properties in Big Bear, California. If you haven't seen those videos and you haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you doing? Go subscribe. Now, as far as my Airbnb portfolio goes, we have eight rentals in Big Bear, California. I then have about 20 long-term rental units as well. So the question is, why don't I rent all of them long-term or rent them all short-term? What are the pros and cons? How do you decide which way to go? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's go over the pros and cons of going long-term rental, versus short-term rental. We'll start with the pros of each. On the pros for the long-term side, you have less management, no furnishings, and more predictable income. You have less management because you have one tenant who pays once a month. They're probably on a year lease. There's not a ton to do with them. Hopefully, if you screen your tenants right, that should be the case. Second thing is you're not worrying about furnishing the property. Typically, long-term rentals are gonna be completely vacant. The tenant has to go put all their stuff in. The only thing you normally would provide are appliances. And then lastly, the income is very predictable. The monthly rent is whatever you guys said it is. It doesn't fluctuate. The only way it fluctuates is if they don't pay. But other than that, your rent is gonna be the same every month. That makes it very easy for you to budget and to know when to expect your check. As long as you have a good tenant. I gotta just make that completely clear. So those are the good things about going long-term. So let's talk about the good things of going short-term. When I talk about short-term rentals, you guys can choose to rent it however you want. It can be on Airbnb, could be on HomeAway, could be on VRBO. The thing I have found with putting it on those sites is that each market has a different site that's the main one for that market. In Big Bear, I'm only on Airbnb. I tried putting it on the other websites, but it didn't really matter. I was still getting fully booked on Airbnb. So I just stopped doing it because it was more of a headache to try and maintain all those sites. That wasn't really a pro, but it was just a little quick tip for you guys. And if you guys like quick tips, do me a big favor and hit the like button as well. Some of the pros of Airbnb or short-term rental are, number one, typically there's a higher income. Number two, you have the ability to use it. And number three, you have a diversified risk. So as far as higher income goes, it is almost certain that you will make more money on Airbnb. For example, on my Big Bear properties, if I were to rent them short term, I'd only be able to make about 1500 bucks on average. But because I put them on Airbnb, I can make $5,000 on average. That is a huge gap. Now, there are other costs that come with that. Now, it's not like I'm making $3,500 extra. I have to pay the cleaners, the property managers, Airbnb, state taxes, there are other costs that go into it. But even once you factor in those costs, typically you're gonna make a lot more on Airbnb. But that is assuming you're picking the right market. If you're picking a bad market for Airbnb, you might not. The second part of that is being able to use it. So all of my Airbnbs in Big Bear, I have the ability to go book it myself as if I was a tenant. If nobody else is using it, I can go up there and use it and get joy out of it. That's a big perk, especially if your Airbnbs are in another city that you really enjoy visiting. That's actually how we got started on Airbnbs in Big Bear because I just wanted a second home there. It's not like I planned to build this portfolio. I was just buying a home that my wife and I could go visit. It'd be our second home, little vacation home. It'd be cool. And then I saw the returns and it ended up becoming a business. I can't help but make a business out of something that provides great returns. But regardless of that, we have the ability to use any of our cabins anytime we want. The last part of Airbnb that is a very good pro is the diversified risk. So what I mean by that is you're having different tenants every single month. So when you have different tenants every month, you're not worrying about whether this guy loses his job or not. You're not worried about evictions. They're only staying there short term and you're having multiple people every single month. We've never had to kick anyone out of an Airbnb. We've never had to go try and get our money. It instantly goes to you from Airbnb after they stay. Now granted, they can file complaints or cancel the reservation or things like that. No business is perfect, but as a whole, I think it's a little less risky because you're not dependent on one tenant making that one payment every month. So let's talk about the cons of each of them. The cons are essentially inversed from the pros of what the other one had. So the cons of long-term rentals would be 
evictions, not being able to use it, less revenue. Like we talked about with long-term rentals, if your tenant stops paying, you're kind of screwed. You gotta go through the eviction process, you're not making money for months until you evict them, and then you better hope that they don't damage it and you gotta do all this stuff to fix it up. The eviction process with long-term rentals sucks. The second thing is less revenue. As we talked about before, Airbnb should make more on average than a long-term rental. Third thing is no use. If I go rent out all my Airbnbs in Big Bear long-term, I can't go use them. Somebody lives there full time. I can't just be like, hey, I need you to get out of here so I can go stay in my Big Bear cabin. Thanks, see you later. No, it does not work like that. So think about that with your long-term rentals. The majority of my long-term rentals are in Las Vegas. And I'm okay with that because I ain't trying to go stay in another house in Las Vegas. I got my own house that's better than those houses. But I would have a problem if my Big Bear ones were long-term rentals and I couldn't go to Big Bear and use them. All right, let's go over the cons of Airbnb now. With Airbnb, you have significantly more management, you've got to furnish it, and you've got more laws and regulations. So with managing, your Airbnb is essentially a hotel. You get bookings every single day that you gotta deal with. Your guests have questions and needs that you gotta deal with. You gotta get the cleaners in there after they stay. You are running a legit hotel when you enter into Airbnb. Second thing is furnishing it. I will be completely honest with you guys. I hate furnishing the cabin. That is my number one thing I dislike about the Airbnb model virtually. We have to buy all the furniture in Vegas, get a U-Haul, take it up to Big Bear, furnish the place. It typically takes a whole weekend. It's very exhausting. If you wanna watch us do it, I actually did a couple of vlogs on it. You can find them in the description below. But furnishing them sucks, and then you do have to replace them over time. Just like a hotel, the furniture has a lifespan. It gets worn out, you're gonna have to replace it. And that means more money out of your pocket. The last con of Airbnb are local laws. So as I mentioned before, I've gotta pay taxes on the Airbnb revenue. That's on top of the normal taxes I pay. I don't have to do that with long term. But also there are all these rules and regulations that come with Airbnb. And every city is completely different. But the point is you typically cannot just go and rent it without the city knowing about it. The city wants their piece and they wanna make sure that it's up to their standard. And I'll tell you what, I don't like rules, I don't like regulations. So typically when we're dealing with the city, it's a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. So now that we understand the pros and cons, how do you decide if you're gonna do it or not? I think there are a few things that will help your decision. Number one is gonna be those local laws and regulations. I think that's the very first and foremost thing you're gonna look at. For instance, in the city of Las Vegas, it's pretty much illegal everywhere to have an Airbnb. Why is that? Because they want you to stay on the strip. It ain't rocket science. If you're staying off the strip, you're not gambling and spending money. They want you right there so they can get your money. Airbnb does not help the strip's cause. So I already know if I have a house, I'm thinking about doing it, I can't even do it, it's illegal. And if I do do it, it's just a matter of time before it gets caught and I get fined and I get shut down. I know many people that have done it, it's just not worth the headache. And that's why I don't have any in Las Vegas. Now, Henderson recently started allowing it. And for those of you who don't know what Henderson is, it's pretty much the Southeast side of Vegas, completely different city with their own rules. And they are allowing Airbnb. And I know that there are people getting good returns from what I've heard. I haven't looked too deep into it. I might do it one day. But as of right now, I'm not too worried about it. I've got my thing in Big Bear. That's what I'm focused on. So the local laws and regulations are gonna play a huge role on whether you can go Airbnb or long-term. The second thing is the ROI. I mentioned before that you've gotta make sure the ROI is good enough to do it. If you have a difference like I have in Big Bear where you're talking 1,500 versus 5,000, yeah, the ROI is gonna be there. But if you're talking about 1500 versus 2500 or 3000, I would personally say it's probably not worth it. You should either choose a different market or go long term. The only way I would take that deal is if I just really wanted to vacation there and I was totally fine dealing with the headache and essentially making the same, but now being able to use it. That's the only way it really makes sense. Which brings me to the third point of, do you actually wanna use it? I personally love using mine in Big Bear. If I was gonna go pick a new market to do Airbnb in, I'd have to pick somewhere that has a good ROI, friendly state and local laws, and it's somewhere I like to visit. If it has those three things, then we're good to go. Personally, I have not done it yet because I know how difficult it is to do just one market. It takes the same amount of work to have eight of them than it does for me to go have one in a completely new market because now I need to go build my team. I gotta go get a cleaner, gotta go get a handyman, contractors, I gotta go learn the market. There's a lot of headache with going into a new market. So I would say if you wanna do this, 
pick the market you most wanna be in and scale that market. I used to have this dream of possibly owning a vacation home and everywhere I wanted to visit. Go own one in Big Bear, own one in Tahoe, own one in Hawaii. But when I realized how hard it was to build it out in one city, I had no desire to open up multiple cities. I'll just go visit those places when I wanna go on vacation. I don't need to own real estate there. It's not worth it. So I would be looking at Airbnb more on the investment side than the fulfillment side for the most part. Because it does take work. You are running a business like we talked about. You're running a hotel. And having one hotel in all these different locations is difficult. You're dealing with multiple employees, multiple people, and it's just usually not worth the headache. You're better off just visiting and enjoying the city without owning real estate. So yeah, those are the pros and cons. Those are how I choose one or the other. There's a lot of things that go into it, but I love both strategies. So what I want you to do, if you own an Airbnb, comment below where your Airbnb is and talk about why you picked that market and what the ROI looks Looks like. If you're thinking about getting an Airbnb, tell me what market you want to be in. I'm curious to hear the thoughts. I'm curious to hear what are the best markets. Maybe I'll invest there at some point. And if you haven't already, do me a big favor. Go hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and follow me on all the socials. I appreciate you guys for watching this channel. Take care.